guys. So I don't know how I'm going to sit in this video because I'm trying to get it so that you guys can see everything and, but it's, it's all, all over the place. Let's see. Ah, I didn't mean to cover it like that. So I just wanted to show you what I was going to try and do really quickly with this leftover rice. So I had this leftover rice from yesterday and it was in the refrigerator. And so it's a little bit it was a little bit, you know, dry, but I heated it up on the heating. Um, I put it on reheat in my microwave with a little bit of butter, just a couple cut up pieces of butter just to get it nice and moist. And I let it cool a little bit. And now I'm going to crack this egg. I know this is like a really awkward video, but I was like, if I don't do this, I'll never record anything. And I have to do it in the moment because if not, I will never record a video. So... Um, I said let's just do this get this done because I'm always inventing and I always have to challenge myself to use leftovers especially you know when you're on a low budget and um, I've been sick lately so I haven't been able to work and so we have to just use every little thing that we have in our kitchen and every little thing that we have in our pantry and refrigerator and leftovers are part of that we're trying not to be wasteful so I was inspired by making um, so my leftovers were yesterday I made pollo guisado and I'm going to try and post the whole video of what I made with white rice. And today I was like, well, how can I revamp that so that my family will want to eat that again? So I'm going to try and make this rice crust that I saw online. Um, I've seen a couple videos. It looks pretty interesting. Preheated my oven to 400 degrees. Now I'm going to pop. So now I beat one egg, put the butter, reheated this. And now we're gonna mix it up. Now I like, I don't know about you, but I like to add my own seasoning. Cause I don't like bland food. So I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic powder just to give it a little something. Now in the recipe, I saw them just moving it around like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on mine because I don't have any spray. Now, if they use a pizza crust thing, I'm just using a, I forget what, spring form pan. I'm nonstick one. Again, and if this doesn't come out, it's just leftovers. What do we? I have hamburgers I defrosted on standby, and um, I made these really cool hash brown waffles that I posted a video earlier today, and you can go check that out if you want to try that. And they can eat that. I mean, it's all about just having fun, a hodgepodge. Who cares? They'll eat it. All right, so I'm going to put it in here. Now we're, we're gonna figure this out so we're not oops, tipping stuff over and cutting my face off while we're cooking. But I just wanted to get this video out really quick so that you know we can start posting because I love to cook and it's my therapy. And even though I'm sick, it's the one thing that I can do when I have energy that makes me feel accomplished and good and I feel like I'm doing it for my family and they appreciate it and it makes me feel useful. Even though I can't work right now in corporate America until I get better or if I get better, but at least cooking is my therapy. So this is my kitchen therapy. So here we go. This is what I'm about to put into the oven. All right, I don't know. This is my first time. So if it comes out wrong, it comes out wrong. Who cares? All right, it's called experimentation. All right, put it in the middle rack and it says to put it on for 10 minutes and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I put that in the oven, but then when I was looking online, um, I think I had said 400, but in somewhere else it said 450. So I'm going to see, I put it to 450 just because my, my crust is a little bit thicker and I don't want it to be too soggy. I want a nice, a crispier crust. So I put it for 450. We're going to see, it says anywhere from at 450 from five to seven minutes. Like I said, this is my first time. So you have to play around with recipes and you just have to stay in the kitchen and 
check it, you know, put the light on in your oven and look for, you know, look to see what's going on. Now I'm going to do this one like a quiche. So my leftovers are, and a quiche usually involves eggs, yeah. eggs and milk pretty much. And then whatever leftovers, I think quiches are excellent ways to use any type of leftovers, whether it's leftover veggies, leftover meats, leftover anything. It's great for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can, you know, make it sweet. You can make it savory. I mean, you can't really go wrong with eggs and milk and I don't know, all kinds of goodies and leftovers because eggs take on what you, you know, the flavor of kind of like what you add to them. So <clears throat> what did I have and what did I think was going to go good with the rice crust? Again, we're experimenting. If it comes out bad, it's okay. Things happen. I have some chicken patties. We'll make some ramen noodles. Nobody's going to die of hunger. Okay. You have to explore. Don't be scared. And remember, these are leftovers. A lot of people don't don't know how to reheat or reuse or whatever leftovers i feel like it's a challenge and it's fun it's my kitchen challenge my therapy okay so i have this pollo guisado leftover from yesterday and i'm going to put it in like I, i'm trying not to you know when you're sick you don't want to the least amount of energy that you have to expend you you know you try to keep all of that other energy so if i don't have to wash multiple bowls then i'm not going to wash multiple bowls so these don't have to be heated up. I mean, I've had them out for a little bit. I'm just going to mix them up, break it up a little bit with my hands. So I'm throwing it in the bowl that I use for the rice. And it's all right. There's a little bit of leftover rice. It's all going to get cooked in the end. doesn't matter. All the flavors will taste great. So I'm putting that in here. And then I'm going to do... Uh, crack four eggs into a bowl. Now, you know, a lot of my friends are always like, I'm scared to experiment or what if it comes out bad? Listen, things are going to come out bad. It's a given. Practice makes perfect. And you have to know, you have to experiment with what flavors work well. You kind of have to know the basis of, you know, like, is creamy going to go with that tomato? Or um, is that Italian going to be okay with that? you know, maybe Korean flavor. You know, you have to be careful with the flavors, but don't be scared to experiment. I mean, sometimes the coolest things will surprise you. I've come up with like Korean Latin, like I'm a, I'm Latina, I'm Puerto Rican. And um, I made this dope, in my opinion, I mean, a restaurant actually ran with it. I And I got to have my own signature burger and it was a spicy Latina, Red's spicy Latina burger. And it was with gochigang paste, which is um, like for Korean barbecue and like <clears throat> with adobo and garlic powder. It was amazing and it ran really well. Anyways, let's get back to what we're doing here. But I'm just saying the point is, is don't be scared. And I use a lot of ghee butter, which is from the Indian culture and I'm Latina. So don't be scared to go out of your comfort zone and play around with flavors because that's when the coolest things in the kitchen happen. So I'm just... Mixing that up, I'm gonna get some milk. Now, since I'm at my last, like, literally have to go to the grocery store <laughs> tomorrow, I don't have much left. So, I have this evaporated milk that I opened this morning. Um, I normally don't keep it in the can, but I knew I was gonna use it. So, I'm going, I think I have about half a cup in here. And we're just going to use that because that's what we have and that's what we're going to use. Now you can use regular milk, but this is a quiche and it's going to be creamy and we're hoping that all the flavors work together. I look at like my kitchen sometimes like a version of Chopped. It's one of my favorite shows is like work with what you have and make it taste amazing because you know, with all this consumerism, we're always just like using so much and wasting so much and we really should try and use what, what we have. And especially when you're ill, you're like, oh, the money's not coming in. I got to figure it out. All right. So I am breaking that up a little bit. I like to smell sometimes my, my food just to make sure, you know, you gotta smell and use your senses, see if everything's okay, make sure those eggs are fresh. Just a little more garlic powder. All right, 
So that looks about whatever it's gonna be. And the oven should be going off soon. I'm, I just poured that into my potatoes and chicken mixture. Now I'm just gonna give that a little mix up. out to be really nice and savory. They liked this yesterday. They were really enjoying that. They love the pollo guisado, which is stewed chicken with white rice. Yesterday I made that. And it was good, but my family doesn't really like, they're really picky and they don't like leftovers unless they like it the first time I make it. So I had to really, to cut down on wastefulness, I had to just start revamping things. So I feel like I'm a revamping expert on uh, my leftover foods anyways. Oh, let's see. So let's check. Do I have the oven light on? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Ooh, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna put this to the side. Wash my hands. And by the way, I wash my hands before I start cooking. It's not like, oh, she's, no, I wash my hands all the time. I always have Purell everywhere. You don't have to use a spoon and all this stuff all the time. Like, your hands are perfectly fine. And in all these other countries where they don't have the luxury of whisks and everything like that, they use their hands. They were the original mixers. So, don't freak out if you don't have all these tools. You don't need fancy tools. Just start doing it. All right, let's check. Okay, I think that from what I read, mm, that smells really good. Okay, from what I read, they say that you just want it to be just enough, just just nice and crisp. And I feel like, mm, can I do one more? I think it's gonna be a little chewy, but good. Okay, I don't know. I think I'm gonna put it in there like this. I I think we're nice and crispy as it is. We're gonna go with it. It's been in there for a while, for about 10 minutes. I'm just pouring the mixture that we made over it. And I think I'm gonna use a little bit of feta cheese because I mean, who doesn't like cheese? And I don't have, I don't have other cheeses, but I have a little bit of feta, and feta is a good savory cheese. Okay, so a little bit of feta. Throw that in here, over the top. Not too much because feta is strong, and like I said, my family's picky. <laughs> But a little bit of that nice little salty and little cheesy in there. Never hurt anybody. I mean, I'm a cheese fan. Okay, so I don't know how this is gonna turn out, guys, but it looks it looks different, but who cares? I'm always I'm always excited to see how things are gonna come out, whether it's bad or not. Oh well. Okay. So this is how this looks like, and I'm hoping one day I can get better with the uh, camera shots. Hold on, let me get you, because I don't have an overhead camera, but this is what it looks like. And like I said, I just want to start getting some stuff out here because I love to cook and I love to share my tips and ideas, and it's cooking is my therapy, and since I'm going to be home for a while now, I convalescing and having surgeries. I mean, why not share my cooking therapy with you guys and maybe my stories? Okay, so I put that in there and we're going to give it about, I'm going to give it at least 10 minutes to see how it sets. Let me see what, let's see what it says. Um, oh, excuse me. So we're going to reduce the heat to 375. All right, 375, and then it says 30 minutes. So we'll put it for 30 minutes. 
and then we'll see what happens. I can't wait to show you guys the final product. Hopefully it'll taste good. All right, I'll show you in a few. Okay, so here is the finished product. This is my version of a quiche with my leftover stew meat and potatoes. Now this is a springform pan. And instead of a crust with flour, I made a crust with, let's see if we can show it, a crust with, let me see, hold on, let me get a, plate. because I'm notorious for it. I just want to see what the bottom looks like. Where the crust was at. See if we can get it off. We almost okay. So it's kind of stuck on there. So we kind of gotta prep it down. But it looks really mm, cool. Ouch! It is so hot. Should probably let it cool. But I'm just so curious. I'm gonna let it cool and see what it looks like after. <clears throat> okay, so here's the final product. This is my leftover stew chicken rice crust. Um, so the, this is the crust and it did fall a little bit on the pieces. It got stuck a little bit. So this is the crust, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the top. It actually tastes really good though. I tried a little, I snuck a little piece. Voila, looks way better. And let's cut a piece. All right. Let's see what it looks like inside. Mm. So that's the rice crust, crispy, and the chicken with egg quiche that we made. Now, let's see how it tastes. part of it. Mm. Okay. I liked it. Mm. It tastes really good. All right. Well, I can't wait till the family tries it. I hope they like it too. This was my take on leftovers pollo guisado with my first time ever doing a rice crust. I'll try and um, post maybe what I did to the rice crust because I'm going to try and post the video for the pollo guisado another day. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, we'll do some kitchen therapy together and figure it out. All right. Take care 
and thumbs up, like it, share it, do whatever. Thanks, bye.